Our first character is Kim Poss- <laughs> <laughs> No! <laughs> Chaos! <laughs> Hello my beautiful doves, welcome back. Today's gonna be a really fun day. I invited Tessa, who runs the channel Modern Girls, to collab with me on this idea, and today we're gonna be restyling cartoon characters from our childhood TV shows. Yeah! We're doing five characters on my channel and five characters on her channel, so if you like what we did and you get to the end and you're like, oh, I wish there was more, there is more. The theme for this restyling challenge is kind of like campy, um, exaggerated live action interpretations. And that's kind of it. Like we wanted to give each other some free reign with the competition so we didn't put too many guidelines. If the characters were younger, like there's a couple characters who are like 10 years old, we aged them up to the late teens. We went into this with the mindset that it's gonna be like a friendly competition. So you guys can be the judge and please let uh, us know in the comments who you think did a better job for this round. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Our first character for today is Shigo from Kim Possible, which was a Disney Channel TV series that aired from 2002 to 2007. And Shigo is the super villain, or she's like the super villain sidekick. So my approach for Shigo is that I wanted to do like a very fashion forward look for her because I know that in the show she kind of wears like a super villain costume. She literally looks like she popped out of a comic book. And I did want to include the fact that it was like a tight fitting silhouette. I just didn't want it to be, you know, full on super Superman. Mm -hmm. So I started off with the top from Rui Official at the front and has like these cool cutouts and it's totally appropriate because Shigo is older. Rui Official also has these fingerless arm gloves that kind of stretch out like this and it has all these cutouts in them too. So I thought it could be cool for Shigo to have alternating. So one is green and one is black. And then I gave her black biker shorts. I don't care if biker shorts are no longer in. It just seemed right. It just seemed right. Um, I originally was thinking about giving her like a leather skirt, but then everything just looked too heavy on the bottom because the top is so, you know, so thin. So I wanted to give her something that hugged the body. Over the knee-high boots, Balenciaga does knife boots that are sick and they're like soft boots. So they're, once again, you see the trend, very tight on the Super body. Super form-fitting, yeah. Right. In my mind, the biker short kind of goes under the boot so that there's no like awkward uh. sliver of skin. It would be alternating so that if there's like a black glove here, it'd be a green boot on that side mm -hmm. and vice versa. And then because I wanted it to be kind of matrixy, um, I mm -hmm. went with these like pretty cool sunglasses. Um, I don't know, I guess like my vision of a live action Kim Possible is that Shigo and Dr. Draken are a little bit more like techie, a little bit more like evil scientists, but less in a cartoony way and more in like a mm. serious, sterile matrix way. It kind of gives me like vibes, you know, like if you're at like a sports game and someone wears that like full piece, like leotard, that's like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where it's like that like spandex leotard, it's that, but make it high fashion. <laughs> that's the vision. There you go. <laughs> for my take on Chico, I also went for sort of like a Matrix inspired thing because I think canonically in the show, she's like 30 something. And I think that means that you can put her in a lot of more kind of like harsher materials and fabrics than you could with like someone younger because that kind of thing is just automatically going to make someone older and also it means you can kind of play with like more skin tightness because it's yeah. like she's older it's not like a 17 year old character who you're like why did you put them in lingerie <laughs> so it's like a little bit okay so i went for like some just very classic black vinyl pants my version of shigo would kind of be like spy assassin meets matrix hacker kind of so i found this really awesome again like a vinyl latex bodysuit that's black but it has these really cool strategic cutouts that are like on the shoulder over here and then on the other side it doesn't have an arm at all and then because of the top i chose is a t-shirt you also get a little bit more asymmetry in that one arm is long and then the other side is just the t-shirt cut if you're trying to like do crime you wouldn't really want to be in like neon green. Do you know what I mean? Like try to like sneak into a bank and it's like, yo, I'm wearing fluorescent green. <laughs> so I also it's kind of like a power move though to do that. You're like, yeah, it's it's like, I know I'll get away with it. 
But yeah, so I went for like a vinyl trench that I was like, I feel like she should wear that when she's like stalking around and then she can rip it off. I also gave her some like green fingerless motorcycle gloves because I feel like every hot girl should ride a motorcycle. <laughs> So I kind of like picture her like riding in on a motorcycle and like vroom vroom <laughs> and just like jumping off with like her like jacket in the wind and just like stomping forward. Very cool. So I played around with like some like green neon ones and I kept seeing these like kind of like tech inspired boots from Demonia. One, it adds like some really cool height. And since she and Kim like to do like hand fighting, I think it makes sense for her to have like some kind of like chunkier boots because if you land a kick with those, it's gonna really hurt. Fatality. Because one of Shigo's coolest part of her outfit is the fact that she has one green boot and one red boot. And I was trying to find a way to like- Give me one black boot. <laughs> She's Father Christmas. Ah! So I really like the boots that you use because a big part of like Shigo's like character design is that like green and black kind of like so I was really struggling to find a way to like naturally bring that in without it going into like cosplay or costume territory. Kudos on you for managing to pull it off because I was like, I'm struggling, I don't know how. I think I like your design more than mine. I will, I will say that with full. <laughs> oh, oh no, <laughs> round one. I think I would swap out my boots for your boots just to like give it a little bit more of that like Shigo-y energy because I think you automatically associate Shigo with like half black half green and mine mm -hmm. is more like black with green accents so i think i needed to push the like green just a little bit more yeah but i do like your use of leather because i actually was originally going to do like a full leather outfit and then when i found like the really official top that kind of like threw everything into like the <laughs> the the circus of my mind <laughs> like doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Yeah, I really wanted to use that top, but then like when I added like the leather elements, it was too, it was like too soft and too hard at the same time. Yeah, like the, it wasn't like well balanced. But I feel like you were really going for what I was like initially, like the, the cogs were going with the hacker matrix. I feel like you mm -hmm. accomplished that part better than me. Yeah. Next on our list is Sam from Totally Spies. We were debating between the three Totally Spies girls, but we ended up picking Sam for some reason, which ended up making our entire list super green. But, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but we picked Sam and she's one of the main characters. The show is very Charlie's Angels like, so they're all spies and it's also very feminine. Um, and the characters dress really well. So this was really fun to do for me at least. I yeah, but it's like, it's like one of the few shows where they give the characters like different outfits every single episode or like yeah. multiple times throughout the episode. Cause usually cartoon characters, they just are like, here's a t-shirt and jeans you're gonna wear this for your entire life. Okay, so my Sam, is that a Marine Sarah? Is that a Mar the Marine Sarah vest? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> I wanted to make Sam kind of like what she wore in the show. So I was really looking at individual pieces. I obviously didn't have time to watch all six seasons. So I don't know if I passed this assignment, but <laughs> she incorporated a lot of like 70s um, inspire pieces. She's also pretty preppy as well. And I think she's the smartest girl. So I started mm -hmm. off with a polo shirt. Also, this is very green and blue and I didn't really realize it until I was doing it. It actually was mm -hmm. because I found the Marine Sarah vest and I was like, I need that. Gotcha. And then I kind of built around this one garment. Um, so I put on like the vest to give it more of like a 70s look. I also just like love the denim vest because it just adds like a little bit more structure to the outfit. And then I added these kind of like psychedelic print I'm yes. obsessed with those pants, actually. Yeah. I am obsessed. And they have like this like flair that also gives it kind of like a 70s. And like the 90s and early 2000s took a lot from the 70s as well. So it's all like, yeah. and, and the it 70s are sense. in again. So, you know, it's yeah. all it's it all makes going. It works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> She's fashion forward. She's not stuck in the past. I gave her the Jacquemus La Grande Chiquito because I don't want her to give her the small bag because, you know, she does carry her gadgets. So it's like yeah. a slightly bigger version. <laughs> Still small, but big enough to put lipstick. 
And then I gave her like these PVC green mules that match the bag. Again, I am I am obsessed with the shoes actually. So I did something similar where like I inadvertently also made a green outfit. I don't, I think maybe the hair color kind of influenced us in that regard because red and green kind of like are complementary. But yeah, so I went with sort of like a more like 90s indie-esque outfit because from what I remember of like the Totally Spies girls is that Clover, which is like the blonde one, is like the super girly, girly, girly girl, super obsessed with boys, etc. And then Alex, who has like the darker hair, is a little bit more like tomboyish when it comes to her style. And then Sam is like somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I went with like a green floral printed midi skirt. And then I went with like a similar kind of like long sleeve top that kind of did the accents of the skirt. So I picked up like on the floral print. And then it's kind of like her accessories where I had a little bit more fun. So I gave her a purple shoulder bag a purple butterfly necklace, purple Mary Janes, and then little white lace socks. And then also I thought it'd be really cute if she had like little white bows in her hair, like little white ones. And so I thought it would just be like a really cute kind of outfit that still is like, if you needed to like run across the street, you could do it or like climb something, you could. It's not like a micro mini skirt or anything. So that was my logic for Sam. <laughs> I love your everyday outfit, but I feel like I like like pieces of it, but I feel like if I was like seeing this on TV, I don't know if I would normally like associate it with Sam necessarily. I feel like, I feel like I'd be like, that's a fashion forward girl. <laughs> I came for your neck. I came for you. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I feel like Sam is like, just like a little bit more like casual. I guess because I feel like the way that they dressed in the show was also not characteristic of the way that like 15 year olds dress True. even though they do start off in high school. I kind of like played with that as well by giving them more mature or giving her a more mature outfit. But I do agree. I think that um, I probably like should have gone with the skirt honestly. Yep. But and I wish <laughs> I wish I had done something with a collar because you're right about like the more like preppy thing. I wish I'd done something like with like a collar detail. So we also decided to do the transformation looks for Sam because she does have her spy outfit that's super iconic. And I took it very, very literally. And I came across this push button bodysuit and pants set. And I just paired it with these like sock boots once again because I just felt like if I gave her a chunky shoe, it would just not look right considering everything is just from head to toe. I was like pretty insistent on getting like a stiletto heel boot because I was like, this show is honestly, it's so unrealistic and fun. And even though people like, I feel like there's like a group of people that are like heels are oppressive, but at the same time, I feel like it's just fun and it's fashionable and they literally have like lipstick lasers. Yeah, like for this type of show. And like if anyone can cartwheel in stiletto heels, yeah. it's the Totally Spies girls. Yeah, it's like for this type of show, it totally <laughs> makes sense. They'd use it to like carve a hole in a window so they could like get out or something like that. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, there'd be a purpose. There'd be a purpose. <laughs> but yeah. So I went a little bit more casual. I mean, I'm gonna just say it now. I think you beat me for the, for the, <laughs> for the transformation outfit. I think yours is spot on. I was like very Charlie's Angels inspired. So I went with like a denim, like boiler jumpsuit kind of look, but more fitted. So kind of has like that 70s kind of thing that you did with your like everyday outfit. Cause I also mm -hmm. like picked up on that with Sam's clothing where I felt like there was a 70s inspiration. So I gave her like a green tube top to like wear under that. So she could like have it unbuttoned and you'd see like some of her color palette there then a green belt. And then I gave her some like chunky green shoes that have like a blue flower detail. Cause I thought it was like, the flower detail just reminded me of like the logo for the TV show. So I was like, this is really cute. <laughs> They're perfect. So I was like, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I gave her more of like a casual spy look, but I think yours is better. I've noticed so far that I've taken this challenge very literally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's honestly, it stems from the fact that like so many of these live action reboots or you know, Boring. like Riverdale. Boring. <laughs> yeah, but it's like not even, paying attention to the source material at all. Like, I feel like they just went so far away mm -hmm. from what the characters dress like. And that's always been like a point of like annoyance for me. So I yeah. think I just like went a little too ham on being like, people will know where this show is from. <laughs> so next up is Velma. It's Velma. I'm gesturing towards you oh, on the screen. I'm gonna purposely edit it so that I'm on the opposite way that you're doing it. Velma. My vision for Velma was that I wanted her to be very Gucci 
and I think you can tell. I think you succeeded in that. <laughs> I guess I didn't want Velma to look bad, even though I know she's not a fashion girl, like canonically, she's just never cared as much about fashion as Daphne. So I don't want to make her too conventionally stylish. And I think Gucci really hits that where it's like, yeah, it's high fashion. Grandma chic. Yeah, it's grandma chic and a lot of people will not understand it. And also because um, Scooby-Doo like started out mostly in the 70s, I did want to like, play with like a more 70s vibe mm -hmm. as well to kind of like reference its past. Let's go through it. So I started off with a base of this like purple, um, very 70s, honestly. That like, blouse with that I like little like this, ruffle thing. But, like that Mozart, that Mozart <laughs> blouse. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, and it's in purple and I specifically picked purple because um, I want, you know, I was like, Daphne and Velma are kind of a thing. The, like, I feel the like they're like kind of lesbians. The implication. They're kind of, they're kind of girlfriends. So I feel like it's something that Velma borrowed from Daphne's closet and then, you know, just like made her own. Um, <laughs> Scandalous. Um, and then I layered on a uh, orange sweater vest to pay homage to her orange sweaters. And I think just because the sweater vest is a little bit more in and also just like adds like more layering capabilities i wanted to go with the vest shape um also very 70s for the bottoms i picked like a midi red skirt it doesn't have to be pleated the one i found was just pleated but i just wanted like a long skirt to give her more of a a grandma look and mm -hmm. she's definitely i think more conservative in her fashion i gave her these like orange socks that would match the vest and then um, brown loafers to match like these like 70s brown glasses that I The glasses her. are perfect. And like I obviously wanted it to be her color combination because it's so iconic to her character. I feel like a lot of people will not want to rock the orange and the red. And I kind of added the purple to make it not conventional still. Like I didn't yeah. want to like balance it out. I still wanted to make it look really funky and weird. Mm -hmm. um, but still something you could see down the runway. Watch out, Gucci's about to have this walk down the runway next season. I bet. It's gonna be like a Scooby-Doo inspired runway collection. Wait, no. Take it back, take it back. <laughs> Gucci, give me money if that's what you want to do it. Give me money. So I went for more of like a literal thing. So I very much followed her like original silhouette. So I gave her like a shorter um, skirt. So it's like an orange leather Prada skirt, which I know is like a little bit like high end and fancy. But when I think of like a modern day Scooby-Doo, if I wanted one, I feel like I would have it be like them in college solving crime in New York. But obviously if they're like solving crime randomly, going to college in New York and are basically unemployed because the cops aren't paying them, they're probably rich kids. So I also gave her a sweater vest. Funnily enough, I actually did come across your sweater vest when I was looking up sweater vests and I was like, ooh, do I like this one? But I decided to go for more of like an Argyle printed one just so we can have a little bit more pattern. And then also I feel like Argyle's in right now. Like it's very like in and I think you get like that association with like preppiness, nerdiness. As for her top, I wanted to do like a turtleneck at first to like go with her character, but it felt like a little bit too heavy handed with the orange. So I was like, okay, I'll give her like a white puff sleeve blouse. So it looks like really big poking out of the sweater vest because I feel like that would just be, it would be interesting to have her have like kind of like a frumpier kind of silhouette or a larger silhouette than say Daphne. I mean like her would be like sleek. Her sweater is very like in the original design is pretty like yeah. big. So I feel like I wanted, so I totally yeah, I that. wanted to give her something like a bit larger. And then I gave her like some like very similar to her original glasses, but more of like a cat eye kind of shape. And I thought like a black messenger bag would be good for her just because I feel like you have to shove so much crap in your bag if you're gonna be investigating. <laughs> and for shoes, I gave her like these black Mary Janes, but they're platforms. Like they're just like platformed instead of heeled. So you could still like walk around and do stuff and they're not that crazy tall. So yeah, I kind of went into like early Gossip Girl era. If you can remember what they would wear going around school, I kind of like took a few notes from that. I didn't really go for like a frumpy, Velma look because my association with Velma is always um, the live action Velma and live action Velma is hot. <laughs> Push your mommy. I was afraid you were gonna do the Gucci granny look too and then I was like I'm gonna have to show you up like the pressure is on like Gucci is like my thing. I think yours 
is probably more youthful than mine. Mm -hmm. I kind of was like referencing also like the live action where they're definitely older than kids. Mm -hmm. But I think like your look would really work also for like them like being the right ages that they are i do really like yours though because i think like the silhouette it is like that grandma chic thing and i do think that is kind of what people associate with velma she's not exactly like the hottie even though i'm like hottie <laughs> i think like for majority of people she's like the grandma type kind of like anal character so i feel like this kind of works because it's almost like that energy where you think she'd like yell at like scold you for doing like the wrong thing and i do think that is kind of like velma <laughs> energy so up next, we're doing Penny Proud from The Proud Family. And The Proud Family was a Disney Channel animated show in the early 2000s. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't really do the assignment. I didn't really rewatch anything. I didn't rewatch anything. So uh, I was like looking on her fandom wiki page and also pulling things from my memory. And, you know, I remember this episode where she was like trying out for football and stuff. Like she's like a very bold character and i wanted her to also like look very put together and confident and on her fandom wiki page it said she was like holding class office and she was like a straight a student so i also wanted to fold in like that very preppy look for her as well and also she like writes for the school newspaper for the collared button down crisp white is such like a hallmark of the preppy look i wanted it to be cropped to make her look a little bit more fashionable because penny does have her fashionable moments. Um, I gave her a plaid mini skirt. It would be high-waisted, so it wouldn't be too scandalous mm -hmm. with the crop. And I gave her a leather blazer that's pink. In a perfect world, all the pinks that I'm showing would match, but this is not a perfect world, <laughs> so they're not matching. And I chose the leather blazer because leather blazers are very in right now, and I think it would just make her look more 2021 than just having her in a standard blazer. Um, and I liked that it was pink because she does wear like a pink cardigan. So I did want to reference the colors of her original palette and I'm giving her a tie to kind of like amp up the preppy look and to, you know, accessorize it a little bit more and white socks and Mary Janes. And I was like, that's a cute shoe. So why not? Yeah. And it's like no frills. I don't know how much money she has. She's like a high school student. So that was also something I took in. Like I wanted it to be still like an achievable look for a high schooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, we went very, very similar routes. <laughs> I kind of like took notes for like, if I did a live action of Penny, I think I would dress her the way Dion is dressed in Clueless kind of. Cause I feel like mm. as a black girl, I feel like she would probably gravitate towards Dion as a character and probably be like, oh my God, I love her outfit. And then kind of like incorporate that into her own wardrobe. So that's why I have mm -hmm. gone like this very like preppy kind of like girly route as opposed to just like something a little bit more casual. I think it makes sense to have her kind of amped up a little bit, even if her character isn't necessarily as outlandish as some of her friends are. So I also went with like a similar kind of patterned skirt, but I went with like a houndstooth design. The kids don't really gravitate towards houndstooth that much anymore. So I feel like it would just be a little bit more interesting to see. Trendsetter Penny. <laughs> I also did a cropped white button up collared shirt and just something really simple and basic that you could wear with just about anything because I think, you know, in a cartoon world, you don't really have to worry about washing your clothes or buying new clothes. But as a real person, I feel like she would have to have a kind of like basic white button up to wear with like everything. So that just makes sense to me. And then instead of going like a blazer route, I went with like one of those like fur trim cardigans that are kind of popular right now. A lot of times people forget that if you're watching like a movie or something and it's all just like one note or just a flat piece, it can look really boring. So I really wanted to like incorporate layering into her outfit. And I think for Penny's shoes, I also went like the Mary Jane route, but I went with like some red ones just because I really wanted to tie all of the colors together. And also I was just really going hard on that like Dion from Clueless inspired look. And that's also why yeah. I gave her like a lot of like <laughs> gold jewelry and gold trinkets. And as for a backpack, so I gave her like this Burberry backpack just because I feel like it's cute, it's preppy, but it's also like a neutral color that you could wear with pretty much any outfit. Our visions are very, very similar. Very similar. Like, it's giving like preppy, the, it's giving schoolgirl. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I feel like it's like, basically she would just switch between the two outfits, realistically. Yeah, In like the same show, same she closet. could wear both. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do like your use okay. of like the darker reds though, because I feel like she does kind of wear like a darker shade of pink. 
um mm -hmm. and i was like looking so hard for like the shade of leather jacket that i wanted and i just couldn't find one so i was like okay this is the pink that we're building the wardrobe around for today yeah um, and honestly, honestly, like the red leather jacket is like such a trope, like nowadays in yeah, like costume too. design that I that I would have been like, if you'd gone with a red leather jacket, even if it had been like the blazer silhouette, I would have been like, hello, Wink Saga. Hello, um, <laughs> once upon a time. So last in our bunch is Usagi from Sailor Moon. I don't know if you grew up with the dub, but I did and her name was Serena. <laughs> I just learned how to pronounce Usagi today. And I don't even know if it's right. I just, I just distinctly remember going to Blockbuster and going to like the anime section and getting like Sailor Moon DVDs. That's like my vivid memory. Also, hey kids, Blockbuster. Actually, it wouldn't have been DVDs at that time. It would have been VHS. Woof. So there is a live action Sailor Moon that was made in Japan some years ago. Do you remember what year? <laughs> <laughs> Years blend in, Bold. the days go 20, by. 2003, 2003, 2003, baby. There was a live action Sailor Moon, but we, I mean, I didn't even know about it until Tesla told me about it like literally two seconds ago. So I didn't use it as a reference, but from the photos that I just pulled up, it's very campy, very literal interpretations. And I think for both me and Tesla, we went with kind of like a more modern interpretation, something that's not super, super literal. So for my vision, I still wanted to keep her in pastels because Usagi's main wardrobe in the anime is very pastel heavy. It's very colorful, but they're all like the same, the same tone, same, is that the right mm -hmm. art term? I feel like this one, I was a little less creative, I guess, because she does wear so many outfits. Like it's another one of those shows where she wears like a different outfit um, in plenty of the episodes. And so I was kind of like looking individually at the pieces and being like, oh, I kind of like this. I want to incorporate this piece. Um, so I don't think there's much that I came up with that she doesn't wear in the show. Mm -hmm. But the styling, styling is where the magic happens. <laughs> the color palette is really, really cute. The color palette's adorable. I started off with like this um, mint green argyle polo knit top. It's like not very heavy. It looks like a very light knit, which is kind of what I wanted to go for her. I was very insistent on the knits for um, Usagi because I don't, I don't remember too much about like where the show ends up going, but I know at the very beginning of the show, she's very like childish. She's very immature. She like cries a lot. So I felt like she would want to wear something like very soft. And for the bottoms, I gave her this denim pleated skirt because she does wear pleated skirts. No, <laughs> nothing else. Why to not say a skater one. skirt? Why not a skater skirt, Mina? Hello, darkness, my old friend. I wanted to give it like, like a denim, just because I wanted it to be like a bit of a different texture. Um, that's really just like my entire thought process. And then mm -hmm. I gave her this buttercup yellow like cardigan that's a little bit like oversized and kind of like slouchier and probably like the most creative choice i did was the yellow cowboy boots the cowboy boots just like perfectly match the cardigan in color so it kind of like ties the whole outfit together and i just like i didn't want to give her sneakers even though i think on a daily basis she'd probably just wear i don't know like cream colored converse i just why don't you do something mm -hmm. a little bit more interesting? And then I gave her this like mini backpack that's like ice cream colored just cause so I think cute. it just matches with her palette. Like everything she wears, it would look good. Very cute, <laughs> very cute, very pastel, very childlike. For me, for my like everyday outfit, I took um, inspiration from like current a current Japanese like aesthetic, which is called Morike, which is kind of like some people cite it as a precursor to the current cottage core aesthetic i don't want to get into the i i'm not gonna get into the history of that whole thing with where it came from whatever what it is a making aesthetic a cottage is, core video <laughs> i think you tweeted I, about that like five I months am, ago oh my god <laughs> but um yeah so i went for like sort of like a morike inspired look so i gave her this white tiered midi to maxi length dress that has like little ribbons and bows here and there and kind of ties in the back. So it is pretty conservative in that it covers a lot of her legs and everything like that. Because when I was like looking up sort of like outfits that Usagi was wearing, I saw a lot of midi to maxi length skirts, a lot of pinafores on top of turtlenecks and kind of like a very like 
90s girly look. I took notes from that and I kind of worked off of this paler color palette. I gave her white sneakers, but I looked up a brand, I think it's called Bape, B-A-P-E, and it's supposed to be like a really popular shoe brand in Japan, so I like went for like that sort of inspiration. Wait, you don't know what Bape is? No, I don't pay attention to actual, I don't do things. Like streetwear, hype beast? I don't pay, I don't pay attention to hype beast. Did I out myself? Like, am I, should I be embarrassed <laughs> <in> this? <laughs> and then I also went with like a similar kind of knit oversized cardigan because I also kind of feel like kids and a coziness and that kind of thing. So I went with this kind of purple lilac kind of cardigan that has these little like black um, flower doodles and a cute little collar. And I just thought it tied in really well with the dress. And then I gave her like a little shoulder bag that is wicker and white leather just to help tie in the outfit together and just make it look like really pastel and girly and cute. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the transformation, like I didn't want it to be as literal as like, you know, one for one. But at the same time, like I did want to reference the original design like very heavily because I feel like it's so iconic. It just wouldn't be Sailor Moon without like a Sailor Scout uniform. So I started off with this like really big detachable Sailor collar um, because she is a Sailor Scout, so she needs a Sailor collar. I wanted to go for a dress because I noticed in the anime, like her look is just very like tight. It doesn't look like it's separated. It doesn't look like it's like- Into two pieces? Yeah, it's like, it doesn't look like it's in two pieces. I came across this Moschino Spring um, 2018 ready to wear dress and I actually edited it to be blue because it's actually a black <laughs> leather, but I was trying to like, I felt like I needed to have it edited blue so you understood what I was getting at because the black just gotcha. made it way like too biker gang. I don't even agree with the material. It would do a lot better as like more of like a satiny silk because um, I do mm -hmm. like the glossiness of the leather but i think the leather is just a little bit too hard um and mm -hmm. it is like such like a soft girly show but i really liked the petticoat underneath the dress that it was styled as i don't know if it comes like built into the dress or if it's just styled but i would totally add the petticoat as well because um i think it just like adds this very like outward structure to the skirt that the anime skirt has and the anime skirt is like super, super short, which I think is very scandalous. Like if it was a live action for high schoolers yeah. to wear that. So I felt like adding this like petticoat that kind of has these extra ruffles to hide, to hide the underwear would be like a, a happy medium. Kind of like a tutu. Kind of yeah, like how like, like very much like a tutu. tutus. Yeah. Yes. And then I had these like ruffle gloves, um, these ruffle white gloves, because I just think it like adds like a little bit more possess the outfit and over the knee boots because the skirt is like super short so I felt like mm -hmm. it needed like a high boot and the I, red boots are so iconic so those boots are pretty pretty freaking perfect so yeah so I also like I've struggled to like not go into like cosplay or like American apparel or like Tumblr <laughs> soft grunge like territory because that like pleated blue skirt it really just automatically if you go that route it's just it just brings up a lot of like other associations and I was trying to stay like away from that association like, I didn't even stay in the realm of like the sailor Japanese costume at all but I did kind of take notes from like sort of more period clothing so I have like this like white high collar lace blouse that has like these really elaborate ruffle lace lace like puff sleeves and then the rest of it is very like sheer and then it goes into like a lace ruffle cuff. So I feel like it kind of references like the kind of like older silhouette of like a traditional like sailor like uniform, how that is like taking notes from older styles. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. And then I put a blue velvet Vivian Westwood corset because Vivian Westwood is like really popular in Japan. That's like popular. And also they're like popular nowadays. And also I feel like it gives a little bit of structure to that like otherwise very white and flowy top. And then I felt like just to kind of make it look like a set almost, I did like a blue velvet like skirt, not like a micro mini, but definitely something like a little bit shorter just to like call back to like the original costume. And then 
because the sleeves of the shirt are already so long i did kind of like i did like red leather gloves it kind of like inverts the color scheme of her gloves because i think that makes more sense and doesn't look as cartoonish and then for shoes i did these red gucci platforms and then these white lace socks i think i want to steal your shoes though am i allowed to steal <laughs> your shoes and put no. them with my outfit no. <laughs> I would like that to be a part of the rules. I would like to take your shoes and put them <laughs> in my outfit. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I would totally wear that outfit. That is a very Mina Lay -like outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine was like very literal, but I do really like the Vivian Westwood corset. And mm -hmm. that like shade of blue looks like it like literally matches perfectly. Um, I edited it. Okay. I edited Okay. <laughs> So you're just going to let me say I that edited. I edited it, and you're not going to say that you edited yours? I edited it. It's like not that color, but same concept, velvet skirt. It's fine. Interesting. Oops. I'm like, does the jury hear? <laughs> I, I, like I said, I really, really love your boots, but also I really like the collar for yours. Like I am missing that sort of sailor girl aspect to mm -hmm. my transformation outfit whereas i think yours is a little bit more you can see that wow. but honestly the really tough part is kind of balancing that like red white and blue color scheme yeah because i was very concerned about it going into like patriotic captain america <laughs> i was like captain america and i was just like that's not what usagi is at all so honestly kudos to the, the like cartoon designer because they balance that really well because i think mm -hmm. in live action it could be really hard to pull off Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. And of course, like if you had fun, which I hope you did, then we do even more outfits on Tessa's channel. If you like Tessa in general, just check her out. She has two channels, the Modern Girls official channel and her new side <laughs> channel where you see more of her beautiful face. Uh, it's called Life According to Tessa. So if you're interested, please check her out as well. Um, let us know in the comments who you think won this round. Yeah, just let kidding. us know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Bye.